been a busy, busy Blue Jay over the last few days in between episodes. If you missed the previous one, that's what we built right there. That's our Mending Villager's house. That's where he lives now. And hello, Mento. What do you have for me today? 18 emeralds and a book for a Mending book. We'll take two. Two? Oh, man. Hold on. I'll take two, please. Thank you. We're going to be applying those to a couple of things in a minute, but if you take a look, all of our tools and armor now have mending on them, except for this one right here. The bow, you want infinity, you don't want to put mending on your bow. Right, Mendo? We are actually getting prepared right now to go on our first adventure of this season into the nether. There's a few things we need to get together, but I want to show you one more thing before we go. I've also made some additions to the fish farm. This is our new fish fisherman hut if we pop on inside here we can see our fisherman villager is trying to sleep but we're gonna wake him up hey buddy his name uh is, is ferdinand he doesn't have a name tag yet but his name's ferdinand the fisherman villager and ferdinand stop going to sleep wake up we're trying to talk huh? Ferdinand will trade raw cod for emeralds. So I've had a little bit of time to kind of stockpile some emeralds for our mending books. You may go back to sleep now. It's really easy to go over here, grab a bunch of fish, go in there and trade, wait for him to restock because we got barrels, barrels, barrels galore for him to restock and link with. So that's enough recap for now. Let's get on to the adventure to the nether. In order to get to the nether, you need access to a nether portal. Portal. We're going to jump down into our mine, go down to lava level, and when you found lava, if you have a water bucket and pour water over the top of lava, you will get obsidian. In order to mine obsidian, you need a diamond pickaxe at the very least. You can also use a netherite pickaxe if you have one, but since we've never been to the nether, uh, we, we don't have one of those yet. I've got a full stack of obsidian, but before we head in, let's take a look at what we got in here. This is what we need to take in with us to the nether. We've got four stacks of cobble stone that's gonna help us not get lost we'll explain that in a little bit we got some torches to go along with the cobblestone as well then we've got plenty of food we're gonna need that to stay full so we don't starve while we're in the nether then we've got a couple new pieces of armor here to add to our set first we have projectile protection 4 on our chest plate that's why we got the mending book so we can add that to that and we've got fire protection on our diamond leggings so we'll go ahead and equip those and leave these two armor pieces behind. We don't want them to get lost in case something tragic happens. Then we have this pair of golden boots. This is going to just stay in the inventory for the moment. We might put it on right before we go in, but similar to why we need leather boots for powdered snow, we need golden boots in the nether and we'll show you why. Then we've got a crafting table and a hopper, a couple of important things to have just in case. And then we've got this book and quill. This is going to be what we write all of our coordinates on for the locations that we find in the nether so here's what i think i'm gonna do i'm gonna find a place that i think would be good to put the nether portal i'm not exactly sure where i want it to go just yet but um i kind of don't want it near my villager i think i might want the portal off over here somewhere maybe we'll put it right here kind of toward the end of this path and a little bit further away from the village we're gonna dig into the ground one two three four five and we're just gonna go one two three four five a lot of amateurs like prowl will tell you not to keep the corners in there because it's wasteful on obsidian but you know what we've got a full stack and we like putting our corners in it looks much nicer even if they are hidden below ground it's fine then we can go up one two three and four that's technically five because there is one underground so then we can go one two three four five and just make a giant square just like this this will be a temporary portal for now we may reshape it or do something fun with it later down the road but we can take our flint and steel and light it up. There's our first nether portal, and it looks a little bit weird because I've got an RTX pack enabled on my global settings, but it's not turned on right now. Um, hold on. There we go. That looks much more like what you're supposed to see unless you're using RTX like me. We've got our first nether portal lit, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that chest we had a minute ago, and I'm just going to drop every single item in here. The reason for this is because if we jump into the nether unprepared and we have 
happen to stumble upon a massive lava lake and fall in, uh, it's not gonna be good. So we're just gonna be careful. I'm gonna keep a couple things on me just in case. We've got projectile protection on the chest plate, fire protection on the pants. We'll keep those because if we do happen to fall in lava and the unfortunate happens, uh, they're easy to replace. And then I've got my flint and steel and I've got some food. We're just gonna pop on into the nether and see what we see for the first time. We'll be very cautious. Okay. I see cobblestone. Oh, good. Perfect. Okay, so this is ideal. This is ideal for a few reasons. One, because Prowl's already been here. Uh, it's a little not ideal because we linked up to his portal and I don't want that to happen. I don't know where we're gonna end up when we go back to the overworld, but this is ideal right here because this is a warped forest. If you happen to go to a warped forest, there are, oh boy, let's get out of here. Hold on. No! <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Oh boy, he's here. He's here. Oh, he's here. Oh, he's here. Can we survive this? Get out! Run away! I am not getting my second death of the season like this. Not like this. I hear him. He's right behind me. I hear him. I hear him. No! Stop it! Are we good? Uh, I think he's not mad anymore. He's not mad anymore. Endermen don't like to be looked at. I'm sorry, can confirm, still at one death. The unfortunate part of this, I'm not sure why we uh, we linked up with Prowl's portal here, because we're actually kind of far away from here. This is far enough away that I'm not sure why that decided to link. Okay, so after an embarrassingly long amount of time messing with the portals and trying to figure them out, we're finally linked up in the right spot. And I definitely didn't need Prowl to do it for me because I can't tell the difference between a positive and negative number. Nope. Definitely didn't happen. But if we jump through the portal, we should end up in the correct spot now. And that is gonna take us to a crimson forest. This is less ideal than the first spot we landed. And I believe that is over here somewhere. Prowl's portal should be right over this cliffside. Yeah, right there. The crimson forest is actually a pretty dangerous place as opposed to the warped forest. The warped forest is home to the unfriendly endermen if you look at them. But if you don't look at them, they're fine. They're neutral, they don't bother you. But nothing else really spawns here. You shouldn't have any gas, you shouldn't have any piglins you shouldn't have anything here that's going to cause you a problem so if you land here you're golden if you land where my portal is located you're going to have to deal with some piglins some hoglins and they're not very friendly how you can avoid the encounters at least with the piglins is to take a piece of gold armor and equip it because they love gold armor if you're wearing it they're not going to bother you there are some exceptions to that rule but in general that should keep you pretty safe we've come to the nether because there are a few things that we need to keep progressing through the game for example Example, we are looking for some blaze so we can get blaze rods and blaze powder for a variety of things We're also looking for wither skeletons for wither skulls so that we can fight the wither a lot of withering there But that's so that we can get access to a beacon. We also need some of this stuff right here This is quartz you need quartz for certain redstone related materials And so we're going to grab as much of that as we can find and as much of it as we can carry in general We're in the nether because it opens up a wide variety of resources that we wouldn't otherwise have access to. So I know it might seem like a little bit of a scary place to come at first, but once you get used to it, it's actually pretty cool. Just avoid the uh, orange juice over there and you'll be fine for the most part. In the 1.16 nether update, they introduced a new armor and tool variety known as netherite. You have to go to the nether in order to get netherite, but we are not gonna get that today because it requires us to have some potions, maybe some TNT or beds or things like that that we can blow up uh, the underside of the nether. And we are just generally not prepared to do that just yet. On the first go, it might not be something you wanna try. I would encourage you just to explore a little bit, get familiar with your surroundings, get a few materials, and then head back. This guy over here is a zombified piglin and they won't bother you unless you hit them. It's like the Endermen, but, but they don't really care if you look at them, just, just don't touch them. If you punch them, you're gonna be in trouble. Oh, and this guy, this guy right here, his name is Pumbaa. He's one of the hoglins in the nether. And you know what? They're actually pretty hostile. I don't know why he's not targeting me right now. Maybe he can't see me well enough. Uh, hello. 
Hello? Okay, here he goes. He's chasing me down now, and they do pretty decent amounts of damage, but they're kind of scared of warped fungus. They're also kind of scared of, like, soul torches and nether portals, things like that. That should keep them away. So make sure you keep some hoglin repellent on you, and they'll just kind of leave you alone. I've made my way back to the nether portal here, and I'm kind of ready to explore beyond just the crimson forest to see what's out there in the nether, see what we can find. And in order to do that, I've brought a couple of things with me. First and foremost is my book of coordinates. And I've obviously written down the overworld and nether side coordinates for the portals. But beyond that, any interesting structures we find, we're going to write them down as well so we can get back there later. This will help us find our way back to the portal as well if we happen to forget and we've got coordinates turned on. We can just check this out and find our way back. If you're not a big fan of coordinates, you don't have them turned on for whatever reason, you can use the old-fashioned way of finding your way back, and that's by putting down markers. We can put one down here, and I typically put a torch down on it so that I know, hey, that direction is the direction toward the portal. And if we go this way over here, we can see there's another block that way, but just to make sure we keep things straight, we can go that way as well. I've brought enough torches in cobblestone so that I could put one torch on every cobblestone. I might have a few extra torches, but that'll kind of help us keep our bearings as we go exploring. From here, I'm just gonna walk around a little bit and see what we can find. And if I come across anything interesting, you'll be the first to know. This guy up here is barely poking his head around the corner. This is known as a ghast. If you've never been to the nether before, uh, you've probably still heard of these guys. They're very angry. They fly around like ghosts and they shoot fireballs at you, like this. You can hit the fireball with a projectile and fire it back at them. Infinity bow for the win, by the way. And uh, you can take those guys out. They do drop gas tears and gunpowder. So if you're looking for a good source of gunpowder, then you might look toward a gas farm at some point. These guys are the slimes of the nether. They're called magma cubes, and they bounce around just like slimes in the overworld. They come in a variety of sizes, a small, medium, and large, to be exact, and if you start chop, chop, chopping at them, uh, they might drop some magma cream for you, and magma cream is great for crafting potions of fire resistance. We didn't get any, unfortunately, but we will need that for our future nether travels as well. If you explore far enough into the nether, you will come across a variety of biomes. We've already come across two of them, actually three. Uh, this netherrack stuff, just netherrack, is known as the nether wastes. We've got the crimson forest and we've got the warp forest where we started. We now have reached a new biome. This one is called the soul sand valley. And in the soul sand valley, you will find a couple of different things. You'll find soul sand, you'll find soul soil, you'll find skeletons, you might even find some fossils in here. You'll find blue fire. And this is the new primary home of the ghasts. They can spawn multiple places in the nether, but they are prone to spawning here quite a bit. So we need to be careful. The unfortunate thing about the soul sand valley is that soul sand slows down your travel speed as you walk across it. So just keep that in mind if you're running away from bad guys. Uh, soul sand, that's going to slow you down. But here we go. Here's a fossil. I got yelled at once for tearing one of these things down. We might still do it anyway, but... While we are here, I am going to go ahead and get a little bit of soul soil and a little bit of soul sand because it is good for a couple of different things. Uh, you can make the wither if you've got some wither skeleton skulls and fight the wither boss. We're still a good chunk of time away from the wither fight, but let's go ahead and prep for it anyway. If we take this into the overworld and light it on fire, we're going to get blue flames just like that, which makes for a very cool additive decorative feature. And then we can also use them for things like bubble columns, which are useful in elevators and and redstone projects. Just like in the overworld, you will find some ruined nether portals in here as well. And uh, I don't know if Prowl's been here yet or not. It might have been raided already. Um, let's keep an eye out for gas. There's one up there. Make sure we are mindful of our surroundings when we're around this much lava. And uh, let's see what we've got here. It does not look like there is a loot chest. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay, we're going to jump and crouch. If you crouch on these magma blocks, you shouldn't take any damage. And let's see. Not a whole lot worth taking here. We'll leave it there for now. If we had a saddle and a warped fungus on a stick, we might be able to ride one of these guys, the Striders, introduced in the Nether update. They are immune to lava, and they actually make a good source of travel if you don't have an elytra yet. Unfortunately, we don't have a saddle with us, and we don't have a warped fungus on a stick, and trying to take it from that guy, 
I'm not sure if that's going to work or not. So another option that you can explore to get from one place to the next, use your navigation blocks for pillaring out and absolutely use cobblestone because cobblestone is resistant to blast damage. So if you happen to run across a gas that starts firing at you, uh, you're going to be a little bit more safe uh, than sorry. If you use netherrack to pillar out like this, it's going to get blown up and you're probably going to fall into the lava lake below. So just be careful. Oh boy. This is why you wear fire protection armor. <laughs> oh, we're good. We're fine. We're all right. We're fine. It wouldn't be another episode unless I fell in lava once, right? This right here is a very, very cool point of interest that was added in Minecraft 1.16, the nether update. This is called a bastion. And aside from the crimson forest, this is where the piglins live. And if you look up there, this guy in the, uh, the black and gold uniform, he is called a piglin brute. They carry around axes and they're a lot more challenging than the regular piglins. They could care less about your gold armor. They're going to attack you either way. So if you choose to go inside, be prepared and be careful. There are several variations of the Bastion, and some of them have lots of gold blocks. Some of them have treasure rooms. Some of them have magma cube spawners, things like that. It just depends on which type of Bastion you come across. You'll find things in here like gilded blackstone. You'll find gold blocks. You might even find some treasure chests in here. If we mine any one of these things or open a chest or any kind of container, except for things like a hopper, it will instantly aggro even the regular piglins, regardless of our gold armor or not. So you need to be careful when you're navigating the bastion because it can become very dangerous very quickly. <laughs> okay. All right. 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 We're good. We're good. We're good. We're right. We're good. Are we good? They're all mad. Hello? Those guys pack a punch. So this is indeed a treasure bastion. You can see the gold blocks down there, a treasure chest down there. I don't know that we're gonna try to tackle this entire thing today uh, because it is quite dangerous. I don't have any fire resistance potions. I don't wanna fall into lava. But what I do wanna show you before we leave is how to avoid aggression from the piglins should you come across a chest. All you gotta do is drop a hopper directly underneath the chest. They don't care if you look in hoppers. They do care if you look in their chest. All right, so we'll open up the hopper and we can see that there's some gilded blackstone. We might go ahead and take that. There's some obsidian, there's some iron, there's extra arrows. We don't really need those. So we'll actually put our extra ones in there because infinity for the win. We'll take the golden carrots. We'll actually take the golden boots because ours are almost uh, destroyed. Look at this. We'll get rid of those and we'll put the new ones on. And it looks like that's about it. There's not a whole lot that's valuable in here. And since we're still kind of early game, maybe we'll go ahead and take the iron block. We'll see what we have room to carry back home. Then we can break our hopper, take that with us, and then discard the rest. And the next biome coming up on our adventure is the Basalt Delta. This was absolutely my favorite biome they introduced in the Nether update. Home to tons of lava, basalt, and blackstone. Not to mention all of the magma cubes jumping around and gas. It's a very dangerous place, but a lot of really cool resources resources to be found here. I don't know how much building we will do out of blackstone this season, considering that we primarily built everything out of blackstone and basalt in uh, season one of the guide. I'm sure we'll use it as accent blocks or things like that, but if you want to see a giant volcano built out of blackstone and basalt, go check out season one. Beside the gas and the magma cubes being a little bit dangerous for this area, not to mention all the lava, uh, you do have this kind of thing going on. In the Basalt Delta, you have a lot of overhanging cliffs and you have a lot of uh, d d steep drops. So we want to avoid those. We will not survive that fall. In fact, I don't even know why we're going this way. If you come here, it might be a good idea to bring some slow falling potions with you. You know, except if this is your first trip here like it is mine, you're probably not gonna have access to that yet. All in all, the Basalt Delta is a very cool place, but it is not a safe place at all. I found the final point of interest for today's video. This is the Nether Fortress, and I promise you, I did think about this before I started the video, uh, and then I forgot to get the uh, milk buckets because in case we go in here and find some withers and get the withering effect, that's gonna be quite dangerous. But you know what? For the sake of the video, 
let's go in anyway. Inside the nether fortress, you can find several different types of mobs, and you can find loot chests and some other things that we will hopefully stumble upon. We gotta be careful out here because these open platforms are prone to be uh, spawning grounds for, there they are, the wither skeletons and the blaze. There's already several of them. We're gonna be very careful uh, not to tango too closely with those guys just yet, but we, we will use our infinity bow to pick some of them off before we head over there. We wanna be careful as well because this is directly over lava. If we get knocked over the edge that's not gonna be good what i think i'm gonna do the first time around is just kind of pick these guys off from afar ouch oh ouchie we're good <laughs> we're fine okay we're gonna pick him off from afar and i want to see if i can get this guy to drop his skull did he drop oh did he it looks like coal, but we're going to check anyway. I've got no more cobblestone, so we are going to use netherrack. We should be all right, hopefully. But let's pop over here, and yeah, it's just it's just coal. We're not really worried about coal. What we want is wither skeleton skulls, and with our looting sword, we have a higher chance of getting wither skeleton skulls, uh, but they are quite rare. We could be here a while. I put a too high bar here because we can go under that, but... The wither skeleton cannot. He should be coming over this way, and uh, he, he is tracking us. He is pathfinding, but this is called a sissy bar. If you're scared like me, uh, <laughs> you won't even let him come near you. You just kind of whack him a couple times with your sword, and, you know, you get some more coal absolutely worthless. Blaze will spawn naturally inside of nether fortresses, but every once in a while you'll find a platform like this. I promise I didn't break it, but th there's no spawner here. So, uh, there might be one elsewhere inside the fortress, but there is not one here. Uh, let's see if we can get some blaze rods from this guy. No blaze rods. So far, not so much luck in the nether fortress. Hey, there we go. We've taken out a couple more, and we finally got some blaze rods. I do see a couple of wither skeletons. There's one down there along with a magma cube we'll want to stay away from there for a minute but there are a couple of these guys here so let's see if we can get them to pathfind over to us after we throw up the uh the, the sissy bar come here bud hello oh he's coming hey bud come on over here step down step down step down and nothing nothing again these wither skeleton skulls are elusive they're very hard to get let's see if we can track all three of these guys down here and we got two of them we got the attention of two that's fine come on over buds can i have your skull please no not you how about you buddy no not you either okay nobody wants to cooperate hold on still nothing i'm telling you this sometimes can take hours oh my goodness i did where did you come from <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Oh, we found an Enderman friend, too. Oh, boy. Well, give me your Enderpearl, please. Thank you. A couple of them, actually. And uh, some coal and, and a sword. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. Oh, I just threw a whole thing of quartz. Oh, I just threw a whole stack of quartz. Wow. How rude. I just threw a whole stack of quartz into the lava because of you. It's gone. Oh, what have I got myself into now? No, 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 bad, bad, bad. Stop it. I'm telling you, do not come in here unless you are prepared and have nerves of, uh, I wouldn't say steel because that's, that's not what I have. Uh, nerves of uh, paper. Nerves of paper. If you can come in here with nerves of paper, you're going to be fine. I feel as if this is not a great fortress. Unfortunately, it's the one that we found. A lot of times when you're in a nether fortress, you will find loot chests. I'm not sure that there's anything like that here to be found. We may have to explore a little bit, but first things first. Is he coming? Hello? No, they're still down there. Hang on. hey -oh, There we go. Excuse me. That's mine. Bring your friends. Tell them. I'm not scared. That's mine. Hello? Anybody else? Anybody else want some? You guys cool? You, you saw nothing. Well, would you look at that? It, it only took two more skeletons in about 30 seconds. We finally got two. So, question is, can we get a third? The great thing about waiting for more wither skeletons to spawn is there's plenty of blaze around, and so far we've collected 11 blaze rods. That's not bad to get us started. Honestly, once you get the system down and you've got a place to hide, this isn't really that dangerous. As long as you keep out of arm's reach, because they do have a pretty good reach, uh, and don't get hit with the withering effect, you should be all right. So, yeah, don't be scared. It's fine. Now I've run into the unfortunate problem where he's blocking my, uh, my hidey hole there. Show we gotta be careful. All right, so we're going to draw his attention 
and we're just gonna we're gonna be careful. We're gonna be careful. We're gonna be careful. Uh oh. <laughs> Keep him far away. Keep him far away. And we, oh, see, we're fine. No reason to panic. I mean, a little reason to panic, but j just a little. Hey, there's a third one. There's our third one. We got three skeleton skulls. We're good. I feel comfortable getting out of here. I'm going to be completely honest. This is not a great nether fortress. Like, it's okay for wither skeleton hunting, but aside from that... There's not a whole lot here. It's been a few episodes since we've done this last, but on our trip home, let's go ahead and do a comment of the day. Blue Jay, you've really stepped up your game this season. Prowl had better keep up. LOL, intrepid Tato. So let's address this comment about stepping it up, all right? So we've stepped it up in a number of different ways so far, and I'm very, very excited about the direction of the channel. First and foremost, videos. Uh, we've put out way more videos in the month of January 2022 than any other month in recent history. We've been cranking them out, and I'm really excited about that, and hopefully we can keep this pace going. We've also been staying pretty consistent with live streams on top of that and doing some fun different projects on the side. Not necessarily always just working toward a video, but sometimes is just doing fun live stream only projects. <laughs> Ooh, that was scary. We're good. Channel stuff aside, pushing the boundaries gameplay wise, oh my goodness, it's been so much fun. I'm actually pretty excited about the direction of season two already because uh, season one pushed the boundaries for farms and build style and finishing bases and we're already on track uh, to go ahead and beat that because we're doing things bigger, we're doing things better, we're exploring new build styles and pushing the boundaries of what I've done before. So I'm very excited. It's gonna be a fun season and we're just getting started. As far as Prowl keeping up, he's never gonna keep up until he learns to use the right bow. Prowl, step it up, man. Well, that's a sight for sore eyes. Let's pop through the nether portal back to our base and we'll take a quick snooze because it's raining and we've got phantoms everywhere. Holy moly. Oh, we can't rest now. Monsters nearby. Hold on. I thought the nether was dangerous. What did we come back to? Woo. Okay, we're good. We're good. Oh yeah, by the way, welcome to the home of Cardinal AKA Red J. Please like and subscribe to Cardinal Games. Prowl. The Cardinals. Ne oh my gosh. Prowl. Look what he did to my beautiful tent. I give this prank a solid B minus. Didn't even change the sides to red. Step it up, Prowl. Step it up. So let's quickly recap on what we got from the Nether on this trip and some things that got missed. If we look inside the chest, we got a wither skeleton skulls, which I'm very happy about. Other mob drops that we got, which will come in useful later, ender pearls and magma cream. We've also got some blaze rods, gunpowder, and we found some golden carrots in a chest. We also got a bunch of quartz, threw one stack in the lava by accident, but let's uh, let's move on from that. Uh, soul sand and soul soil, those will be great to have later on as well. And a couple of things that we're actually missing from our trip to the nether, specifically in nether fortresses. We didn't find any loot chests, so unfortunately no great loot from that, and we didn't get any nether wart. If you want to craft potions, you have to have nether wart. So we're going to have to go find another nether fortress in a future video or live stream, probably live stream. So be sure to like, subscribe, click the bell, turn on notifications and check out those streams when they happen because we have a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you've never been to the nether before, hopefully it kind of took away some of the mystery for you and gave you a little bit more confidence to go explore for yourself. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you come back for more.